and welcome to another episode of a talk of opportunity today we have andrew and myself and we're going to be going down a list of the do's and don'ts of dming all right 30 minutes before game time you got the snacks ready. Your friends are on their way with 12 packs of Mountain Dew, Code Red specifically. All right. You have a homebrew adventure ready. You've been working on it for like the past two weeks. And now you're starting to wonder, oh, God, it's down to the wire. What are some ways to prevent stepping on people's toes? I've never done this before. I'm really nervous. I think I might throw up. This is a list right. to help Tough. prevent you from potentially throwing up. If you do throw up, that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a nurse, man. You're going to be fine. <laughs> every time. Every time I run a game. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> it's, also that way I, it's also that way I stay thin on the camera. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's yeah. very important for streaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, today I'm enjoying the uh, Le- Leffa? Leffa, the, the blonde uh, ale that I sent you a picture of the other day. Let's go to a uh, beer tracker. See what they have to say. It's a product of Belgium. Ooh. It's a uh, crisp 6.6%. Lefe Blonde by, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, Ab- Abbe de Lefe. Yes, that. Is a Belgian blonde is ranked number 68 for that style on Beer Advocate. As is that a, good? Yes, as a score of 82. Savor is, the mystery of the ages. At which out of a hundred, that's that's pretty damn good. Well, I can tell you, it's a really good blonde ale. I am enjoying a nice tall glass of uh, water from <laughs> from my fridge <laughs> <laughs> because we we haven't bought beer yet because <laughs> we've been more worried about getting groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the bare necessities, man. Beer is one of them. We're gonna get there. Ask, I, uh, ask, ask, ask any historian. They'll tell you. I, I have already been told that someone, a certain someone, bought me a bottle of Elisha Craig as a housewarming gift. So, Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm just waiting for that to get here. <laughs> oh, by the way, congratulations on your new home. Hey. I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't wait to uh, bring uh, Twilight Imperium and, uh, you know, yeah, break your have, table. Yeah, we're going to have like an all weekend run of it right that's that was the plan well yeah we haven't told the girlfriends yet but they're definitely down for it yeah. Yeah. It, it, listen it's just one of those things it's better to ask for forgiveness and for permission just, just yeah bring. exactly we'll right. just we'll just tell them it's a quick game you know it is, it is a quick game a quick eight hour game um with part one and part two yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> so back to, uh, you know, what we do best, Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm going to start the list. Are you ready? Okay, so first things on the do's of the list, uh, dudes. Mm-hmm. Um, let your players use solutions that you otherwise wouldn't have thought of. And I think this applies. This has happened to me so many times while well, DMing. Um, you know, I run mostly modules because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lazy, you know, fuck. So... Uh, Sometimes the solutions on the book, it's, it's something that you just, you read once, twice, three times, and then you're like, how are they even supposed to arrive at at this conclusion, right? And you're like, there's no way unless I tell them something very, like, obvious, you know, or, or, or essentially hold their hand. I have been surprised so many times with some freaking creative solution of some kind uh, that they come up with that. It just it, it solves my problem. Like I don't have to think about how they're gonna uh, solve the puzzle or get through whatever. You know, they find their own solution, and I'm like, that wasn't in the books. So you guys killed it. Inspiration for you, inspiration for you, inspiration for all of you. You know what I mean? I think it's. I think that goes doubly for the for the um, problems in the books, like the obstacles in the books, where it says, "Oh, the players can do this," or like step on this like panel to activate whatever but then they come up with some crazy outside the box solution that technically still does the job you know 
because I mean the the good thing about the um the source materials is that um for certain obstacles it's like yeah just whatever works man <laughs> so. yeah no yeah exactly and oh man I, I wish I man I should have written some down but like I can't remember at the top of my head right now because we've been coming back from a, a kind of a little bit of a break um but dude freaking like Heather Jeremy um Howard and Alex all of them just. Oh, they sometimes like surprise me, and it's like the best feeling in the world. Where they just like it, it adds to the story. It doesn't you know? Like I feel like some people are afraid that it's gonna subtract from the lore or the seriousness of the situation. But in my opinion, like you know, you go through life and you make shit up as you go. Nobody knows what any what anybody's doing. You know what I mean? Like just 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 execute, adapt, overcome. You know? <laughs> yeah, and I think I think it's also these situations are really good to show how this person thinks yeah in, in in a situation when they're backs against the wall how how do they come up with a solution there are some people yep. that will be really esoteric and try to come up with a really creative solution and then there's some people that just hit their head against the wall and see what happens so <laughs> i'm the latter just so you know <laughs> i am too it's okay <laughs> so the first on the don't list is and this kind of this kind of coincides with what you were saying don't come up with solutions for every problem. And mm. and when when I when I jotted down an idea, what I was thinking of, it was something um, something more of like a natural obstacle, like uh, like the players are going through the forest. They have to find I don't know some <laughs> some Deus Ex Machina thing in the forest. Um, yeah, some thingamajig. Yeah, some goopa. Yeah. Some some MacGuffin. Um, some MacGuffin. And they have to, and there's a chasm. There's just like a huge rift in the earth. It was caused by, I don't know, something deep in the lore, whatever. <laughs> and there's no hardline solution. They just had to get, it's literally getting from point A to point B and figuring out how to get there. Um, and and those are the situations where, and this only works really on obstacles. I wouldn't do this with puzzles. Um, but just just present something and just see how they handle it. And really it doesn't even, I wouldn't have a solution. I would just try to see what they do. Right. That can be something that's like, Oh, I'm going to use my athletics to jump across. Okay. Roll for it. Or, Hey, there's a tree over there. I'm going to cut it down or something. Okay. Roll for it. You know, just like, yeah, it can, it can lead, it can lead a, a, to a lot of different shenanigans that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, you know, build up the, 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 what's it called? That the story. That the players are coming up with as they go. Um, also, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it, it. It could be a cool situation where, like, the DM really has no idea, like, how to get across this. So it makes it more authentic, I guess. The uh, you know how hard it is to actually figure it out. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's like if it's it's not like well, first of all, it breaks the the idea that D and D is a video game because in a video right. game you come, you come across a chasm, there's going to be a conveniently placed like wooden log or something that you can push over, you know? Yeah. You know right. Saying? Yeah. Whereas yeah. no, just, I don't know. This, this has been here. <laughs> they, this, this, they, they didn't make this rift for you. This rift has been here. <laughs> right. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, you know, that, that could, uh, that could be, um, that could be, you know, the, the the part of the story where everybody dies, and then you have to make a new character because you're a terrible DM. You know, like, hey, you you rolled a two on your athletics check. All right, well, better break out those D6s. <laughs> consequences. There's always yeah. consequences. Yeah, and it's just yeah. it. It's really because really when when you think about it, every encounter is just a resource drain. You know, so. Yeah. So you're just trying to see, you're just trying to press out of them. What kind of resources are gonna are they going to use for this kind of thing? So yeah, I can I can definitely 100% agree with that. And, and that kind of brings me to my next uh, my next point, which is you know you, you can be tough, you know, but you also have to be fair. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think in my opinion this goes for me because sometimes like I tend to be a little bit too soft, you know, and like let players do like a lot of things to get away with other. Uh, other things are like, oh, you know, I uh, they roll really low, but oh, whatever. I'm not gonna, let, you know, I, I skip through that stuff. But like at the end of the day, what makes the story 
special is those bad roles or those that's that tough situation you know um by the same token like if you do something in that specific moment that is supposed to be tough um and you and 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 you run uh at a moment just like that one later on down the story you know you you have to keep it the same it has to have the same outcome um you know uh does that make sense or am i just rambling no no, it's like it's like let, let me ask you a question what what feels better like overcoming a really difficult challenge or steamrolling some nobody enemies right exactly yeah you like, know it's it's one of those like, hey, where it's it, like it, like you know you, you roll you roll bad and as a dm sometimes i don't want to see those characters get hurt or killed or 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 or, or you know tpk the group or anything but like if that's the outcome you know, like, and, and, and again, that can lead to another part of the story. Like, maybe they didn't all just die. They just went through, like, another realm or another um, plane of existence, and then they can continue the story that way. The point is, being tough is not a bad thing. It's also, um, I think it's also uh, worth mentioning that if, if if we're especially going by 5e rules, the um, the CR, the challenge rating for 5e, is very fluid. Um, and so yeah, far, the yeah. fact that, and so far, the fact that you can throw a couple of CR five monsters at a level three party, and the level three party might just nuke them. Um, mm-hmm. Because do you know how many times that I've presented monsters to the to like a party, and I was like, oh no, that's going to be too much, and I kind of rolled it back, only to have <laughs> the party just completely wipe them out like it was nothing, and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> shouldn't have pulled my punches there so yeah yeah we've all been there we've all been there like you, if you feel bad and you try to like like lower the difficulty and at the end of the day they 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 don't even remember the encounter because it was so easy mm. it's the worst yeah and it's like it's not something it's not something that you want every combat encounter to be life or death but it does give your players a better sense of accomplishment when they do overcome a challenge, even if it is a not so significant one. Like it doesn't have to be a boss fight every time. Man, this beer is really good. <laughs> this water is crisp. No, like it's really good. Is it? Yeah. Are you going to say like, me a bottle? Uh, um, yeah. If you just, <laughs> oh, God. So next point. <laughs> Okay, so this is a big one. This is a real big one. Um, if there's probably any DMs that like are writing this down, this is going to be like in your top ten commandments of DMing. Don't take away player agency. And by that, I mean if your player wants to do something. Okay, actually, let me let me give you a really good example, a personal example that everyone everyone in our group knows happened, and I admit to it. <laughs> There was a moment in, in Curse of Strahd where Heather, who was playing Lilith, a warlock, wanted to like kind of knock around a wagon that, at the time, she didn't know was full of explosives. And I said, no, you don't do that, or something to that effect. That, that was essentially what I remembered. I was like, no, you didn't do well, that. So if I, if I, no, that sounds, that sounds like you're being an asshole you weren't being an asshole essentially like essentially what what it was is she wanted to remove the um the piece of wood that keeps the wheels uh that keeps the wheels um attached to the to the wagon you know what i'm talking about like that it looks like a oh, I forgot what it's, it's it, a it has a name it's like yeah whatever so she wanted to remove that so in case uh Rick-Tabby wanted to escape the wheels will fall off or whatever and you asked her you you did that whole the whole DM thing that whole um are you sure about that like a million times, uh, and you know even though she she wanted to do it and, and and you asked you kept asking like are you sure are you sure, and essentially you 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 lead you let her to not do it, right. and that was one of those things where it really it really that part really bothered me that I did that um because I was thinking afterwards man that would have been really funny. If, like, right, <laughs> you know, so, so I mean, granted, it wasn't like I could, I completely took it away, but I more or less did take away the agency of the player by doing that. And that that specific moment, yeah, for sure. And yeah. and you know, we we learn from our mistakes and stuff like that. But like that could have led to maybe nothing happened right away. But then as you know, we walked away, and then the wheel kind of like you know 
Oh yeah, I mean that out and then boom. Yeah, that that was something that's like after after the fact, after we were done with that session, I had thought of like a hundred different things that could have happened. That could right. have further that could have furthered the story, but also kind of showed the consequences and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my god. Like I like I <laughs> It, it was a real red mark for me on that. Um, but yeah, no, don't ever take away player agency. And, and by that, I mean, don't ever take control of a player's character. Like, if your player wants to do something, let them do it. Let them deal with the consequences. Don't ever be I, like, I, no. Don't, don't ever be like, no, your player does not do that. He does this instead. Because at that point, where are you even playing with people? Yeah, and I can I 100% agree with that, and you know we learn from our mistakes. And it wasn't it wasn't like such a big deal at the moment. Uh, it was just kind of one of those things that like after the session was over and we started thinking about it, it became more apparent of the situation, you know. And yeah. it's one of those things that you just keep thinking over and over again, and there's nothing you can do about it, <laughs> you know. But we learned. This is this was that was was that like your second? Uh, no, that was like. That pretty early on on your, your you first DM in a Curse of Strata that happened, right? No, that was that was only like Oh, it was seconds? it was because it was because no, it wasn't like early on. It was because it felt early on because we just made it out of uh Velaki. We spent so many sessions in Velaki. You know what I right. mean? And that, so this is like the actual first time that your actions had immediate consequences. Right. Yeah. So that's and why I, I felt like it was early and on. And I was like, I do not want to turn these guys in the paste. The second thing <laughs> out of a town, but I did. I did, that right. to the, I did that to the point that I felt like it diminished the player's fun, which that's yeah. the whole point <laughs> of playing. Yeah. D&D. So yeah, we we live and learn. We learn, but that's that's a that's a good that's a good um that's a good example. And again, just because my English is not the best, I was like, "What the fuck does agency mean?" <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now I know and, what it means. <laughs> and there are like far worse examples, but that that's just that's that struck a chord with me. So and you know that's another uh, something I can lead on to this point is, you know, do make failures fun. You know, <laughs> now you now now you know, you know, like why you know because you thought about it after the after the fact. Look what could have happened if 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 Heather went through with that plan. You know, and those are the things that, you know, you won't really have a chance to think on the spot until it actually happens. And yeah. it keeps you on your toes, you know, like, oh, okay, they're going to fuck this up and something's going to happen. Uh, Alchemist fire is going to, so how can this affect? And it doesn't have to be grueling and like, oh, you know, your characters die and their skin falls off or something like that. It, it can be just like, you know, I don't know, the door ca- catches on fire and behind the door is... A, a, a wizard on a toilet or some bullshit like that yeah like it doesn't have to be like the second she removes that linchpin it's the nightmare scene from terminator 2 <laughs> like, yeah exactly you know it could have been like she removes the linchpin and the wagon kind of settles and she hears the clattering of bottles and stuff like that and then she looks through the windows and sees alchemist fire as far as the eye could see <laughs> you know right. so right yeah, yeah. yeah. no it, because uh, failures is part of the game. I mean, I think mostly everybody remembers the the low rolls and the natural ones more than the actual epic uh, credit crits because that's what leads to the most ridiculous stuff. If you think about it, I can tell you, I I don't really remember a lot of the encounters in Dragon Heist, but I definitely remember my character <laughs> running into every single fucking glyph on that rooftop. In detail. <laughs> See, because oh. I made I made your failures fun. <laughs> yeah, for other people, <laughs> but not for you. <laughs> hey, man, three out of four. Okay, <laughs> they laughed. Yeah, yeah, I guess majority rules. No, I had a good time. <laughs> it was like, it, dude, it was bad, man. It was a bad time. Uh, but yeah, there you Pleasant. go. It, it, was, it was a blast, literally. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. Remember, remember, but do do make your failures fun. And I think that's that's actually what makes TND so awesome because it's so ridiculous when like shit goes off the walls. Uh. So something that kind of something that kind of um, plays into that is um, don't fudge your roles too much. Like, like it's one thing if it's like a level one party and they're getting like a preview of like the big bad evil guy and and the big bad evil guy is like putting on a display of power 
<laughs> and throws a light a lightning bolt spell, and you somehow manage to roll nothing but sixes. That's one of those things where it's like you don't ask him. You, you don't. You don't say. Uh, and I learned this from a web DM. You don't say how much health do you have. You say this is going to take you down to zero. <laughs> <laughs> damn <laughs> or no 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 what was that he said he said you don't take this much damage it, you you just say this this is gonna put you at zero just so you know <laughs> um, damn, so. That, that's, that's, that's intimidating as well. right. but but also on the opposite end okay so you did fudge your role for the big bad evil guy for the first encounter but now this is the boss encounter this is when this is when the dude is supposed to be unleashed and he is emptying, emptying all the salvos. This is not the time to be fudging rolls. This is the time yes. to be, hey, if he rolled all sixes on that fireball, guess what, buddy? <laughs> I hope you have uncanny yeah. damage or something. Yeah. You know? No, I'll- and I can I, I and, and I can tell you, I can tell you a a quick a quick uh, personal experience with me uh, about this because it, I don't think I told this to anybody to anybody yet, but do you do you, the first game I ran was the Lost Minds of Endeavor. And to, at the end, and I remember this is how I pulled it out if, before I, I pulled the curtain a little bit. The characters made it all the way to the end. They get to the big uh, evil guy's lair, room, you know, it's all intimidating and whatnot. The, the big, big evil guy attacks. You know, not much happened. Um, and then one of my players attacks the big evil guy. And pretty much kills it in one shot. Mm. My players, and I could tell because, you know, spend the whole time going after this dude and then he's dead in like no more than like three turns. Uh, they were disappointed, but they were like glad that the adventure was done and they won and did all this stuff, right? That first attack that I did was actually lethal to that one player. Yeah. And that could but have be- completely changed the tides of that fight. And because I was like, you know, this is their first time DM. This is my first time DMing. This is their first, the first time playing D and D. Let me, let me play a little bit safe. Uh, you know, let's give them a one round of, uh, of mercy. <laughs> nope, big mistake. I shouldn't have pulled any punches. And ever since then, I try my hardest not to pull any punches, ever. Now, yeah, it is. It is one thing. Like I'm not saying don't don't stop fudging your rolls, but don't make it to the point where every time something really bad happens, you fudge your rolls. Right. Because you know? then at that point, why why are you even rolling? <laughs> yeah. What what's the point of having dice? Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, you you have that, and that's a lot of that has to do with the fact that you need to learn to relinquish control. Yeah. And that's one yeah. one one of the more harder lessons for me personally to learn. Was that yeah yeah no for sure and and this goes to my next point you know do expect everything to go off the rails and every time even though i know this group already and i know that they're not like the craziest you know oh let's break this campaign type of players every time before i start dming one a game i'm like how oh, the hell are they gonna break this <laughs> most, most of the times they most of the times they don't you know they find like like we said before they find creative solutions or um, a different way of approaching things. They don't necessarily go like, oh, let's leave water deep. No. Uh, but it's always that fear is always there. And the only way I cope with a fear is to be like, fuck it. Let's, you know, if they break it, if they decide to like uh, go off the rails and um, I don't know, whatever, and can't go to go after Strahd in the first round, you know, like, uh, or on the halfway through the campaign at like, you know, level five or whatever. Mm-hmm. It could lead to some really interesting stuff. You know, maybe the DM was not necessarily a um, a stickler for death and they don't die. They just pass out and they get captured and then now in the dungeon somewhere, you know, I mean, that's that's one of those things. It's like you can. It's it's it is a sandbox. If you want to go to Castle yeah. off, you can. I'm not going to stop you. I don't recommend it. But hey, you know what? Something cool might happen. You never know. Exactly. And as a DM, you're gonna have to learn how to like roll with those punches, you know, and and just improv, man. <laughs> I've, I've been meaning to take an improv class for the longest time, but like improv. Is, it's... 
<laughs> just, just bone up on your improv. Yeah, that's the whole that's the whole thing. Like, okay, you're in Cholt and you have to go to the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Well, the Tomb of the Nine Gods, I don't know exactly where it is. I'm just I'm just saying a direction. The Tomb of the Nine Gods is northwest. Right. You can go east. Well, fuck. <laughs> 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 exactly and, and, and again uh uh but you know like no i i i agree you know like it's players i i like to give players as much freedom as possible there's no reason to hold them back on anything mm-hmm. um and also you know and oh, go on finish your thought uh well you interrupted me now i can't finish it fuck the point is you know it, it can lead to some crazy, some crazy stuff. Yeah, and and again, this is the whole reason why we have something that's called a random encounter table, right? <laughs> yeah, you know? and, so that, that's and, the whole point. And, and sometimes, you know, like sometimes um, there's areas that the, that around the map the players don't know, and you can just move those areas around. It doesn't necessarily have to be where the map says it is for the DM. Yeah, and this is and. And this is why, like, the DMs, the, the, fuck, help me out here. <laughs> the DM guide has, like, you know, tables for civilizations and artifacts, mm-hmm. natural stuff, just for this kind of thing. It's one of those things, right. yes, it's, it's scary, but you should also, I'm not saying you should encourage it, but don't hate it when it happens. Right, yeah. exactly. And, 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 hey, if they do go, like, completely off the rails... Uh, just be like, hey guys, give me like ten minutes so I can like get my thoughts in a row, and then we can continue. Simple right. as that. And and that's another thing that kind of leads into to a don't, which is don't stress about messing up behind the screen. You know, it's like okay, the best the best example I've heard was this: you go, you're going to like a bar where they have live music, okay, and it's a it's a small it's a small little known musician and he's playing one of his own songs you never heard of it and and after the show he notices all the notes he's missed but to you you just experienced that song you don't know any of the notes that he missed or messed up on that's right ex- exactly that's exactly the same thing for being a dm because it's one of yep. those things that's like i don't i don't know how you are but i know i read the book not to the point <laughs> that I memorized it, but to the point that I'm kind of sick <laughs> of reading it. And it's like, oh, I know this is going to happen and stuff like that. And I know this, that and the other, but then you mess up and you're like, Oh God, no, that player was actually supposed to do this or no, not, not that player that this NPC was supposed to do this or this enemy can do that instead of that and whatnot. But guess what? Your players don't know that. Right. You're, you're right. Probably, you know, as far, as far as they know, that enemy that had this extra ability that you've like suddenly improv, that could have been a special enemy just for this, you know, this campaign or something like that. Like they don't know that they don't have to know that, you know? And it's, that's one of those things where like, you just gotta, you just gotta roll with it and you never know something organic might come out of this mess up and it could spring open a whole new thing. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. That's... And then you know we, we've all, we've we've all dealt with that. And you know, again, going back to my first campaign that I ran, um, I, I dude, I still remember. <laughs> now that I think about it, it was such a stupid thing. But like in uh, uh, Lost Minds of Fandelver, the first thing the first encounter is obviously goblins. Um, and first. the book tells you specific things to do to get the players to like go into like a specific direction because you know it's it's a, it's a starter set, so it's like very specific. And I guess I didn't convey it good enough or well enough for them to like you know like, oh look the shiny area or whatever i can't remember i think it was like uh, whatever the point is they didn't go they didn't go that way and i'm like fuck they're supposed to go this way well <laughs> one of them decided to uh investigate the goblins and it turns out that the goblins actually had a tattoo on their shoulder and the tattoo was a map of their cave where there's where the books that they were supposed to go which made absolutely no sense but I played it off as I'm like, yeah, you know, goblins don't know how to read. They just look at the image and figure their way home. <laughs> so they use they use they like they use the, the piece of skin with the tattoo to get to the to, uh. to the frickin' kids. 
first of all. That's pretty metal. I dig it. Well, well, at the end of the game, they're like, man, that part with the with the tattoo was really cool. And I'm like, I'm like, I completely oh, made that. I completely made that up. <laughs> and they're like, what? No way. Because I right. remember it, it was my very first night DMing ever, you know? So I was sweating balls. So it's just like, all the, I don't know. It was, I still remember it clearly, you know? And that yeah. brings me to, you know, that brings me to uh, the, the next point. The deal of you know prepare for the unexpected. Have yeah. have have little notes here and there of like, you know, uh, certain things that are uh, actually you said it earlier. You know, random tables or perhaps um, if you're using a module, it's like for Tomb of Annihilation specifically, there was a bunch of stuff around the jungle that was very spread out. So if the, if the if the I could move any of that stuff, you know. So before I, every game, I was like, oh well, they have to go. They have to find this specific thing in order to find out where this other thing is. But if they don't go this way, you know, maybe I just move that to this other area. You uh, know, the, little the quantum ogre. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like just just think about how you can if you if you want to lead your players to have. A good experience, not necessarily like a rail, you know, on rails experience, but like to give them the the good chunks of um, of adventuring that the book has. You know, you, they don't. Again, this goes back to they don't know what's behind the screen, so you just move things around. You know, but but prepare. Don't don't. And it's it's easy because it happens to me all the time. But you know, get cut off cut off guard. Yeah, that's and, of, like unless you give your players a map. They don't know the layout. Well, the thing is, the the thing is that they had a map for uh, for Schult, but the, their map was empty because Schult was unexplored. So for me, it was very easy to just move things around. Ah, uh. yeah, you know, and, you know, it could be like that. You can have notes, uh, you know, a, a little um, note card with uh, NPC names or you know what they do. APCs that can point them to the correct uh, in the correct direction, uh, you know, little things like that can help you in that situation, in my opinion. Oh yeah, and it's it, it, that's definitely um, and when you're pre- preparing for the unexpected, it's one of the things that's like you can't your players are going to have certain motivations, and and the NPCs are going to have motivations, and the boss monsters are going to have motivations, and nine times out of ten, none of those motivations line up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so while your boss monster is bent on ruling the world or something like that, and you have an NPC who's pretty much the only like thing that's like, hey, maybe we should go over here. You know, your players are like, I came to this island to discover like where my dad got lost or some crap like that. And so and so it they're you're setting them up for A, but they're looking for C. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And that, again, that all just plays into it. That's, that's what makes D&D D&D. <laughs> that's the whole point. You know, because, like, in video games, like, for as much as, as they make these amazing games now that are open world and all this stuff, you still have to follow the narrative. You know, you cannot make it up yourself. And and I think, I think that kind of also um, plays into one of the don'ts. Which is don't get angry at your players for not doing what you planned, um, mm. because that's one of those things. It's like you, all right. So your players are camping in the forest and stuff like that, and you've planned for this ambush that's going to happen to like the west of them. It's on the it's on the footpath and stuff like that, and so and so they walk down the path, and all of a sudden a, a net falls on them, and there's goblins and whatnot, and they're gonna they're gonna attack them. Well, suddenly your your players decide to head back south. They got to double back for something. Like, don't, right? Don't get mad at them. You know, like they don't know that you set up an ambush or you know, like an encounter and stuff like that. Like, and don't don't get angry. Especially, don't get angry if the players don't act in a certain way that you think they're going to. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, don't set up story beats and expect the kind of payoff that you were thinking in your head. <laughs> because how you want the players to act and how the players are gonna act are two different things. Oh yeah. No, unless you have that like, you know, you, you have that one guy you could trust. Be like, hey, you should probably do this one. Even, 
even then i wouldn't do that but you're, you're still like spoiling stuff you know? yeah um yeah and, and, and i get it like i get it when your players say oh let's let's you, you hear them planning their next steps and it's something that you're completely not prepared for and it's something that was like not supposed to happen until like way later on like you start sweating you start sweating cold and you're like oh man you, know, that... you guys to go to yester hill i thought okay you guys <laughs> go to wizards of wine it's right there and everyone's like yeah, I'll yester hill and i'm like what are you thought <laughs> i completely skipped it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and you know but but there's no don't get angry it's very important because you're just gonna ruin it for everybody <laughs> at that point <laughs> when that happens i just laugh i'm like okay fuck <laughs> here we and go that, and that's why you mercilessly <laughs> prep for everything <laughs> contingencies <laughs> upon contingencies <laughs> no that's well, that, you know. that was just one of the things where you're like okay um that that's the moment where you go okay let's take a quick bathroom break mm-hmm. hey, turn mm-hmm. off the camera and flip through your book real quick <laughs> oh, no one's looking. <laughs> play cool man play cool yeah <laughs> so you know you know everything they don't need to know that you don't and again i wasn't i wasn't angry that they went to yester hill i was admittedly kind of caught with my pants down but i wasn't angry <laughs> that they went to yester hill um, yeah I was just like, oh, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, and you know, this kind of leads to uh, to to another one of the points. Oh man, how many times have we said that in this episode? Um, but uh, allow flexibility, and this 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 one is like in a, a couple different levels. Um, the first one is obviously just allow your players to just do what they want to do. You know, if the ranger wants to like jump around and do pirouettes and like flip here and flip like don't discourage that like let him you know that's how he wants to express it to himself or herself you know uh, if they want to go left or right or if they want to like oh return to home to town even though the town is supposed to be on fire or whatever like don't sweat it don't you know let him do <laughs> that's why you should read the book at least once before you run it um or have your own notes uh, of all this, the the areas that your players have gone to and and um practice your improv uh because and that's and that's another yeah. like, oh sorry Look. No, no no go ahead i was done with that okay well that's another thing that's like and it's it's like you shouldn't be setting expectations for players like you know you can say hey this setting is like for curse of Strahd, it's victorian horror that's essentially what it is right but, I'm not going to be, and I shouldn't be mad if someone makes something out of like Lord of the Rings or, you know, or something goofy and fun because that's what they wanted to do. As long as it's not like, as long as it's not like messing up everyone else, it's fine. You know? Yeah. And you know, you, 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 you can only tell them so much and like, Hey, you know, Victorian horror. And it's up to the players to like, a lot of players want to play into that. You know, they're like, Oh man, let me think of like Van Helsing and like all these other kind of stuff that could, that I could like base my character off of some that's players, like, some players don't care. <laughs> and that's, and that's totally fine. Like, um, like Howard just plays a guy and that's, I'm cool with that. That's totally fine because it works. But that, that was also why during session zero, I was like, Hey, if you want to play like a dark and edgy guy, like if you want to, that's how, that's why I phrased it like that. You know, like you're, oh, like, you know, if you, it, yeah. If you want to play, if you want to play one of those, you know, <laughs> Strahd is the perfect, uh, <laughs> the perfect uh, setting to do it. on. <laughs> Yeah. But it's also, but also, when you say allow flexibility, I know you meant for the players, but also, I think it's also important to allow flexibility for yourself. You know, as the DM, because it's not your fault, man. no, it's really not. It's not <laughs> you your know? fault. It's not your fault. Oh, don't you fucking goodwill hunting me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you know what I mean. Like, don't. Don't be so hard on yourself. That thing yeah, for sure, man. Exactly the way you wanted to. Don't be so hard on yourself that you kill the player. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. dude, it hurts. It hurts when you kill a player. I, I, I'm not. I'm not one of those DMs that rejoice on that shit. Like, <sighs> oh, that makes one of us. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the nice DM. <laughs> I, I was. I, I'm one of those. Ah, 
foiled again. DM. <laughs> I'll I'll get you next time, adventurers. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm essentially Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hey, <Matt. laughs> oh man. Whew. No, it's just um everyone everyone has to have fun, essentially. So yeah, don't be yeah, don't, sure. don't be so hard on yourself and don't be so hard on the players. So we're all here for a good time. Are we though? Yeah, of course we are. Oh. And I think that actually kind of um what's it? Because because we we mentioned before with the flexibility about how we should let one player you can let player one player do that and stuff as long as it doesn't mess with everyone else. And that kind of plays into a don't, which is don't let one player's fun mess up everyone else's. And this is one of those super important ones. Um, because what if everyone's taking this game fairly seriously? You know, they made fairly serious characters. <laughs> You know, something out of like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. Like, you know, grounded, gritty characters. And then right. you have one guy who's playing like a homebrew pixie sorcerer, wild magic like <laughs> dude, which you're like, okay, that's kind of fine. Whatever. Cool. Like, I'll allow it. Whatever. It's dandy. And then all of a sudden, he just starts immediately screwing everything up for the players. Like, like he's pissing off the guards. He's, you know, he took a he took a crap on the in, in the king's audience hall or some crap like that. Or you know, he's burnt down an orphanage just because he thought it was fun. And all these consequences are now all fall on the players because naturally it's the party. It's not just the one guy. Well, guess what? If all the players are not having fun, you need to sort that shit out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that that's one of those things where you where you pull that dude aside and you're like, hey, look, you're the only one having fun here, <laughs> you know, and that and and that kind of that kind of harkens back to one of our previous um, episodes about like trouble players, where it's like you really you don't lean into this one guy. You know, just because he's having fun, if you can see the visible dismay of all the others, especially yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I haven't had to deal with that, like ever. No, me, me neither. But still, that's one of the things. Like, that's that's number one on the RPG horror stories that I've seen. Yeah. There's always that that one guy, capital O, capital G, one guy, <laughs> you know, that just messes everything up for everybody else. And he, and nine times out of 10, he does the whole, but that's what my player would do. No, fuck that. Uh, that's, <laughs> <You know? ow. laughs> Shut up. Shut that's, up. That's, not an ex- that's not an excuse to get away with anything, you know? Yeah, go home and don't come back. Run away. <laughs> and Think about what you've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, yeah. you you get to sit hey, in the hey. corner with the dunce cap. <laughs> so. Yeah, and hey, hey, you know, you know, it's it's one of those things, you know, like it, it leads to another one of my dues, which is you know, talk to your players, and this goes okay. again in, in a couple in a couple different levels. Like we talked about this before in a previous episode, but like talk to your players about setting, about how things are going to roll. You know, set some expectations. If you have a trouble player, talk to that player about, hey, man, you're ruining everybody else's fun. You're taking it a little too far. Let's try to really down let other people shine, et cetera. Uh, but even more than that, talk to players about, like, different things uh, outside of just the game. But, like, hey, you know, let's not make this awkward. You know, when you guys come over to my table, uh Maybe it's one of those houses that take off your shoes because we have carpet type situation. I don't know. Just like be open and, and it's always a back and forth. Don't ever like let things build up uh, and then you blow up uh, after a game or so because somebody just, you know, the last straw and take it out on somebody who doesn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just keep it, keep, keep it, make it clear that you can always, they can always talk to you. You can always talk to them, you well, know, listen- and, and be open to conversation. Yeah, this is one of those things. It's like if you're playing with people, first of all, I hope you're friends with them. 
You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, Very and important. That's, and that's why I think it's like a friendship is just like any other relationship. Like you need to, there needs to be a level of communication, you know, and, and you do need, you know, there are some, there are going to be some times where you have to communicate with a player, you know, who, like I said, I hope he's your friend, <laughs> you know, about certain things, but it doesn't have to be like bad. It doesn't have to be like, you know, setting boundaries and crap like that. It could be like fun things about like, the game and whatnot. Yeah. Like, for example, what's yeah. it? Like, um, like we were, uh, uh, to, to, to give a good example, God, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, Heather's character in Curse of Strahd, uh, messed with the magic mirror and it, it set her alignment to chaotic evil. And, and we, and like a little bit after that, I kind of ended the session, but then the next day, like I messaged, I messaged her like, okay, how do you want to do this? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I have some ideas, but how do you want to handle this? You know, kind of a thing. Like, how would your character go about doing this? And she told me what her character would do, and I'm like, okay, we'll 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 run with that. I'll come up with some uh, some ideas. I'll bounce them off you. See how you feel about that. And we just kind of, you know, we had a communication about it. <laughs> Right, and I think that's I think that's a good point you bring up because like I feel like a lot of people, and me included, because I never really actually thought about it, but like think that the only part of the communication between DM and player outside of game happens and in session zero, and, and that's, that's not it. At all. No, like not at all. Like, cause, well, you and I talk a lot back and forth, but that's because we always do that. But if if something happens to like you just said, something happens to a specific player, you know, ask for their input. Don't just assume. Like, oh, because of, uh, on their backstory, their 40 page backstory they gave me, they say this, and therefore this is what they're going to do. No, just ask them, like, hey, man, like, you know, what would you like to do, et cetera, you know? And, and, and just like that, like, hey, you know, like, I remember, like, after each session uh, of, I think, well, actually, yeah, after each session, I always ask, like, hey, what do you guys think, you know? Uh, anything you guys want me to do more of, less of, you know? Like, just kind of like a little questionnaire after you call a uh, customer service, you know? Yeah. And that's, and that's the, just, just for anybody that is listening, if we do ask that we are legitimately asking for criticisms, right? We're not, like we're, we're not, not, asking, we're not asking for a pat on the head. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. No, like, Hey, you know, did I make too many silly voices or like, Hey, did I, did I, did I overdo it with the, with the, with the critical one failures? Like, you know, like things like that, like what, what do you guys need, want? We need the feedback <laughs> that makes <laughs> us better. <laughs> that lets us know what we're doing wrong or what we're doing right. <laughs> Wait, you're not, you're not, a, you're not a gut level DM like I am. Uh, I think that plays into our don't stress about messing up behind the screens thing. <laughs> <mentioned> previously. <laughs> No. Nine time out of ten, the DM doesn't have any clue of what's happening either. So. <laughs> we're, just, we're just rolling along. <laughs> oh god, that remind that reminds me of a Tumblr post. Anyways, <laughs> um, no, but it, it's just it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, communicate with the players and let your players communicate with you. Like, if you're a player and you're not having a good time, or you feel like, hey, my character's not you know, like getting enough, whatever, you know, like you're not letting your player have enough, uh, you know, situations where they come in handy or stuff like that. Say something like, right. I'm yeah. not, not going to be insulted. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, Oh shit. I thought you were totally okay with it. Cause you're not saying anything. <laughs> exactly. Like we don't know until we, we know, like, you know, we can't read minds. You know, I know you all think that we are gods, but sadly we're not gods. <laughs> Oh, I mean, behind the screen, that's a different story. But <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love when players are always like with the, the wish spell, and they think that like we're gonna give them like all the, all the answers or like a, a divine intervention, or and then we're like, I don't know what no, the fuck you want. <laughs> the, the 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 wish spell says in the text for the DMs to purposely fuck it up. Right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So don't don't try to play any of that crap with me. I, I think I, I remember. Oh, what was it for? Um, for Storm King's Thunder, I didn't read the last chapter, and they wanted. Oh, fuck! I can't remember. But the point is that they came across 
some sort of like element that required me to have knowledge of like the last chapter of the book and i literally just skimmed through it and i like <laughs> I started sweating cold as usual. And then in my head, I'm like, man, what do you guys have to do this to me? Like, just, yeah. just go down the dungeon. Let me tell you something. You get a witch spell, you think you're getting a genie's lamp, you're getting a monk mm. ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a lawyer to come up with that. <laughs> so, yep. Oh, gosh. <laughs> man, we kind of got off the rails there. Yeah, yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> We have to be professional, Andrew. Jesus. But on the opposite end of the players, you know, if your players want some more them time, that's okay. Or that's perfectly fine. Everyone deserves a chance in the limelight if they want it. You know, there are some players that are okay with being in the backseat. That's cool. There are some players that want their moment of glory. That's cool too. True. But this also kind of leans into a don't, <laughs> which is don't give in to your players' whims every time. You know, and that's something that's I am, like I am, I am, I am the worst offender at this. <laughs> yeah, you actually are, and that's something. <laughs> that's something I had to like. Well, hold on, we'll we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but that's something that's like you have no. Actually, no. Let, let's let's just expose you for the fraud that you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man! They're not supposed to know this. <laughs> Okay, so what's it? You gonna turn me in like that? No, no, no. I'm gonna don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, 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 so this was right after the session that you got the silver sword. So you uh-huh. had the silver, silver sword, so you could do your Geralt cosplay. And, <laughs> and then, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then, what, what are you talking about? He says as he kicks the white wig <laughs> <laughs> behind like something. <laughs> Anyways, um. <laughs> And then at the end of the session, you're like, man, I can't wait to get to that sun sword. I'm calling dibs on that bad boy. And, <laughs> and, and that was something like afterwards, I'm like, you're you're hogging all the good shit. <laughs> 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 and and it's it's like it's one of those things like I, I, I pump the brakes on it, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> but if, if you made if, me realize uh, that there's other players, <laughs> exactly. Because I was going, I was going fucking off the rails, man. Like, like you already have two swords, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but but it's, it's also okay. So what if you're not? What if you don't have a spine, right? And one of your players is constantly bickering. Oh, I want a vor- vorpal sword. Blah blah blah. Uh-huh. Why don't they ever give us any magic items? <laughs> But they're like level two. Like, no, right. you're not you're not getting a Vorpal sword, dude. <laughs> yeah. like, you're, you're not giving you're not getting a plus three legendary weapon. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is there is barriers to these kind of things, and they're there for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, you, you have you have to have set some boundaries. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's also it's one of those things, it's like if you give your players everything. Eventually, nothing will become a challenge. Right. Well, That's it. If you give your, that, I mean, there are some settings that's like high fantasy, or what is, is it called high fantasy in the DM's guide? Or it's something that's like high magic, whatever. Where it's like, yes, everyone starts out with a magic item. But even then, it's like a beginner's magic item. Where it's like, it's like a quiver of one extra arrow or some shit like that. Like, it's not, mm. it's not a, like world changing I, thing you know right 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 it's it, it's something like okay yeah here you go now now be quiet <laughs> <laughs> here enjoy it <laughs> yeah exactly there are there are ways to give your player stuff without giving them essentially like a lightsaber <laughs> or like a tactical yeah. move <laughs> yeah so, man, that, 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 that kind of stuff needs to be earned anyways you know yeah. Exactly, because like, where's the fun in that? Where's the challenge? Yeah, you know? uh, man, I'm such a little shit. <laughs> oh, you're not. You just you, you just got really excited, and I had to I had to rein you in. That's all. It's because it's, it's the first campaign that I actually play. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. It's, it was actually it, the actual conversation was something that's like, "Hey, I know you're excited, but when it gets to that moment." We can all discuss who gets these items. <laughs> <It's> right. Like, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh man. But <clears throat> having magical items is cool and all. But how do you oh man, sorry, I just lost my train of thought just thinking of that stupid conversation. <clears throat> uh. Another another do's on my list is uh, it kind of plays along with the fact of having like you know cool items that are not necessarily like world breaking but they're fun. It's uh, you know just keeping the balance of you know uh, rules as written and the rule of cool. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because uh, again, <sighs> I have plenty plenty of. Um, of interactions with my players where they want to do like uh, I can't even like <laughs> funny enough arcing back to the very first um the very first uh campaign I ran or one of whatever the uh, lost minds of Endelver I remember there was one situation where there was a bunch of uh, ogres I think on a mm-hmm. cave and the players can see inside of it and we had this guest player come in and he was like hey do we have any rope how about one of us well, each well, two of us get uh, around uh, you know the edge of the cave, and then we, we pull the rope, and then some somebody else calls the ogres, and then when they run out, we pull the rope, and they all fall, you know, so they're all prone, and then we attack them. Uh-huh. Pretty o- pretty awesome, right? Uh- but I was I was a baby DM at that time, so I'm like, oh man, how is this gonna play? So I started pulling up the rules. Oh well, the cave is I can't remember right now. Uh, let's say two hundred feet wide but they only have 50 foot of rope like it doesn't really play out uh then they had the, it would be the strength you know i started doing all the math and like halfway through i'm like fuck this is way too cool to not see it play out and then i just made them do to like like two checks like a strength check to see if they can hold up to the rope and then like each ogre had to do like a dexterity check to see if they fall and it played out awesomely like three of them went prone except for one you know and it was great it was pretty fucking cool, and it was a great idea. And I didn't have to like pull the math calculator and see how 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 long the rope is, the strength of the rope versus the the weight of the of the uh, of the ogre, you know. And like once one is down, can the other one step over it? You know, like I didn't want to be that nitty gritty. Right. right, that's something like that's like, huh? Well, it takes fifteen. 15 damage to burst rope who gives a shit <laughs> right yeah and it was it was a cool idea i was like i didn't think of that i thought it was just gonna go like and start shooting from the distance but instead they like snuck around and they they, they pulled the whole thing off and it was great it was funny as hell yeah. and that's and that's an actual like that is an actual perfect balance of rules as written and rule of cool because mm-hmm. it wasn't you didn't automatically just let them trip up the ogres like the ogres did have to make a roll and there was a very mm-hmm. good chance that those ogres could have, hey, wait, there's a rope here. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right, yeah. You know, and it's one of the things, it's like, well, what if they mess up the strength check and all of a sudden they're being anchored behind this train <laughs> of ogres now? <laughs> you know? Yeah. That would have been, been hilarious as well. Like, it's, you know, because I think one of them was like a, one of the players was a dwarf or, you know, so it would have been hilarious to be in a tiny little dwarf being pulled away by the ogres. That would have been and, awesome. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's awesome. So, like, always keep a nice balance. You know, it still have some role, so it feels like it was it was um, it was uh, gained. Is that the word I'm looking for? Mm-hmm. Deserved. It was deserved. deserved. Whatever. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, like so it was. Oh yeah, you guys pull it off. You know, but don't start like finding the AC of rope and how much hit points and you know all this stuff and all you know all your strength plus this strength plus the math and all this stuff. Because if you want to do that, play Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's one of the things. It's like if you really need to know what the like how how much damage it takes to break rope that'd be a situation where your players are hanging off a ledge and you have rope mm-hmm. but there's mm-hmm. like exactly shooting at you kind of a thing like that's when that stuff plays in and that's the rules is written and the rules of cool they should play in only when it makes the game more dynamic mm-hmm. in, in, in their own respective ways like i will not Personally, I will not let Rule of Cool override rules as written in a boss fight. That's only because in a boss fight, like this is it. Like you need to you need to be prepared. Whereas, you know, if it's like a normal encounter and you wanna like 
do a somersault off of a tree while shooting an arrow. I'm like, okay, well, make me a dex check first to see if you don't fall in your ass. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and then if you make that yeah. dex, dex check, then make me an attack roll, you know, kind of a thing. Where it's like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll you know, you, you could do this. That's that's fine. You know, it's cool. <laughs> For sure, so. exactly. Yeah, you know, it's, it's simple. It makes the game, it makes the game a lot more fun. And it doesn't drag down the encounter by doing a bunch of math because let's be honest most people that play 5e were in it because it's fun and it's it's, it's accessible you know like yeah we don't want to play 3.5 you know we just want the advantage disadvantage system yeah and it's uh, uh that's that's one of those things it's like um this also works into um to a smaller degree this also kind of works with like the dungeons, like building the dungeons. And the best example I can think of is, and I, I, I know you've seen it because I, I hope you've seen it because you've seen all the acquisitions incorporated, but there were, there was an adventure where Viari played by Patrick Rothfuss, who is a rogue, um, asks the, ask Chris Perkins, the DM, like, is there chandeliers in this place? And so, <laughs> and Chris Perkins goes, well, there is now. <laughs> <laughs> And that's just one of those things where it's like everyone knows what VR is gonna do, and, yeah. <laughs> and Chris Burke is like, I can't, I'm not gonna poo poo on this guy's parade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? and, but, and that's but, totally valid. Like, you know, yeah. like adding adding things that were not in the room at first. You know, as long as the room wasn't like, you know, uh, meticulous, meticulously described at the beginning which let's be honest most of us don't do that like yeah there is a chandelier yes there's a fireplace yes there's a table that you can smash your enemy's head on uh, you know totally yeah. valid yeah you, nine times out of ten even even the descriptions and like the source materials are kind of vague mm -hmm. the only the only time it's really descriptive is if it's a puzzle and yeah. it's like, nope, this is what you get. And that and that's the rules as written part comes into play. Yeah. Where it's like, nope, this is what you get. There's no magical chandelier that's gonna help you out of this situation. Whereas, you know, in other places, yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and, and, and you can definitely tell when your player is thinking of something and, and why not let it see being played out. If it's too yeah. ridiculous, make make the DC high. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's something. That's that's something. If your player wants to jump across a two hundred foot chasm, you can be like, okay, you can do this, but you need to roll really, really good. Like you right. have to, you have to set that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. And you, you, you've set up the payoff. You, they know there's going to be consequences, and then you, just, you literally just let the dice fall. Yeah, exactly. And oh man, I love what I love when like there's like ridiculous situations that that they just manage to roll just enough to pass and it just makes the whole table just burst into like celebration. That's like the best moments. And that's kind of that's kind of the thing where it's like that also plays into the don't fudge your rolls because that's one of those moments where especially like during the boss fight like your player's like, oh man, we need we need him to fail this will save. You know, we've already burned through his legendary resistances and stuff like that. We need him to fail his will save. That's right. not that's not the moment to be like, <laughs> he rolled a nineteen when actually you look at the dice and it's a two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so again, rules is written versus rule of cool. It's so. always a balance, my friends. A balance and the force. <laughs> You're supposed to bring balance to the force. Anyways. Um <laughs> Oh no, we're not talking. We're not gonna talk about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down that path. That'll be another episode. <laughs> yeah, that's an episode for another time. That's gonna be that's gonna be an off-brand episode where I drunkenly ramble about the way things used to be. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. so kind of leaning into the whole balance between raw and rule of cool. Um, don't let nat twenties become instant successes. And don't let nat ones become or natural ones. Sorry, I know I say nat like oh natty light. <laughs> or Gross. don't let oh, God I threw them out <laughs> a little bit. Or don't let natural ones become punishing failures. Now, one little stipend. This is purely outside of combat because, well, to a degree, because in combat, a natural twenty hits no matter what. 
And right. in fact, and in fact, I remember in 3.5, there were certain enemies you can only hit them with a natural 20. Jesus. Um, well, those were like deities and stuff like that. Like oh, they, had, okay. they had an armor class of like 40. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so you had to crit to hit them anyways but this is a situation where let's say for example you are trying to use diplomacy on or your persuasion they don't have diplomacy in 5e my bad <laughs> unbelievable trying, i know i know sorry i just showed my age there uh, <laughs> I, i'm not really i'm not going gray it's silver there's a difference <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Anyways, so so you're trying to use persuasion on an enemy, on like the enemy orc war chief, and you have killed numerous soldiers on his side that he has known, grew up with, and has a like battlefield bond with. If you roll a twenty on your charisma check for that, that does not instantly make him your best friend. You know, what right. I'm saying? like there are things that come into play with that. Like just because you rolled that nat 20, you're not going to become BFFs and have a drink at the bar. Like he might a natural 20 means he might not kill you right now, but he's still thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> like he's, exactly. still, he's still sizing you up and seeing how quickly he can kill you, you know. And that's one of those things where it's like you can't. A lot of people, when they see a natural 20, they're like, yes, I nailed it. Well, maybe not, because the DC for this is 30, you know, and you only have a plus three to that roll. So, mm, sorry, <laughs> you know, and the DCs do go up that high. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. And that's and that's something that's like if. And, and it's like it's like another thing. um, Because that was a situation where there was a lot of context what if it's a situation where it's like you're trying to break into like a bank vault but you don't have any proficiency with rogue tools you're not a rogue you're you're a level six barbarian with no dexterity like a natural 20 on a lock picking or a sleight of hand for lock picking ain't gonna do crap for you man yeah dude. <laughs> i'm exactly. sorry you know but then again on the opposite end okay you rolled a nat you, you rolled a natural one for your dexterity check, but you have proficiency in your dexterity save and you have like a plus four to your dexterity because you capped it out or whatever. So yeah, that extra like plus what? Plus seven or eight, that could be enough to get you through. You know, that's that's one of those things where it's like that natural one does not mean your character like slips on the banana peel and you know <laughs> lands face first in the into a pile of dog poop. Like no, like there is there is wiggle room between those two. You know, you, yeah, you for sure. Saying? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the crits, the crit natural crit twenty and the critical failure. I think really most of the time they only apply in combat, right? Like I don't. Is there a situation outside of combat that it will actually apply to? The only thing, the only thing I can see a natural twenty being an instant success if if it's like a situation that's more lighthearted, you know, like if it's more of like if it's not a critical to the story situation, like I'll let a nat natural twenty be like okay you've nailed it you know kind of a thing where it's like it's like mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if they talk to this guy it's cool like he has like no bearings on the story whatsoever um, right but kind of bringing it back into combat the one thing i can't stand is when people's like okay so i came up with a table for when my players roll a natural one and they like accidentally hurt themselves or their friends or something like that. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> like that's one of those things like, okay, a natural one means that they, they took a shot at the enemy and the arrow goes like five yards to the left. That does not mean right. they, that does not mean they suddenly become bumbling morons. Like they, they don't, <laughs> they, they don't instantly become the three stooges with swords in that <laughs> second, you know, like these, your characters are supposed to be skilled at what they're doing, you know, even to a certain degree. Yeah. They missed a shot, but it, they're not going to, they're not going to literally shoot themselves in the foot, 
Yeah, the arrow is not gonna it's not gonna loop around cartoony like and hit you in the heart, you know. Yeah, like the only time I would I, if there's ever a situation where a player is gonna hurt another player, like accidentally, I'll it's 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 I'll let them know first. I'll be like, hey, if you miss a shot, you're probably gonna hit the player or something like that because it's like an AOE spell or the player that's in potential of being hurt is being grappled by the player or grappled by the enemy that the attacking player is trying to get you know it's something that's like i'm going to be fair about it you know yeah most definitely so all this stuff that we'll be talking about like the natural 28s natural ones and then like uh fudging your roles and stuff like that at the end of the day like it plays out to having your players being creative and then letting the roles dictate if that if the creativity pays off and that's one of my views fyi you know encourage your players to be creative um, and I feel like if you make their critical failures harm them and 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 and, and, and uh, uh, it discourages them from actually um, trying later on in the game, you know, because just because it didn't work once doesn't mean it's not going to work the next time you do it. You know, a flip, a, a jump, a, a knee slide, an arrow shoot, or whatever. Um, and this also plays with uh, uh, puzzles and and situations in the game. Um, Allow your players just to be as creative as they can be. Encourage it, you know, right. like make it fun. Like, hey, yes, that sounds amazing. Like actively out loud, say that those words and then tell them, like, I will let you do that. If you give me two, uh, the two checks, uh, dexterity and, and an athletics or whatever, you know, and, and it has to be this much, like give them the numbers and then they'll have a goal to roll to. And, and then it makes it very exciting. And then it just shows them that you are willing to. It's not just, you know, <laughs> that uh, old school Final Fantasy, you know, like, oh, we're all standing in a line and it's my turn and then it's the enemy's turn and then it's my turn again. You yeah. know, it's like there's there's a dynamic feel to the game after you open the doors to having your players, um, you know, be uh, uh, open their creativity. Right. To exactly. the game. Yeah. Like, don't <laughs> attacking is not always with a sword or a bow and arrow or whatnot. Sometimes attacking is knocking over a pillar, you know, mm -hmm. to, to to stop the enemies from advancing or something like that. Like there's more to there's more to D D than just hitting stuff and talking. Like yeah. you know, it, it's D D. You could do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. And, and a good way and a, and a good way to know if your player is uh is starting to think to do something crazy. Uh if they start asking stuff like, hey is there a chandelier in this room? Boom. Yes, there is. Yes, this is a role you're gonna have to do to do whatever the, the action you're telling me that you want to do. You know, yeah, like wait, how much how much gold like cups did you say are in this room? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <would you're> like... <laughs> you know, and then and, and after all that, that's that's exactly what DD is all about creativity not just for the dm to have a creative outlet and create this crazy world but having players experience it and add to it in a crazy creative awesome way and you don't want to you don't want to discourage that you want to push it as much as possible exactly uh, so i think the ends are do's and don'ts i am pretty sure there are a lot more that we missed and if anybody ever comments on our videos or <laughs> leave us reviews on the iTunes, they can tell us. Um, but those oh, are the yeah, ones that we, th those are the, the, the main ones we thought of. There's there's a ton more that we that we probably didn't list on here, but these are the ones that we I felt was the most important to talk no, about. No, no, I felt it was more important. Oh, I felt it was more important. It was definitely the most important est to me. Um, <sighs> <laughs> Jose's being pedantic again. <laughs> There's that word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but so Andrew, uh, now that we're done with this list, um, any cool news or anything on the DMD world that happened since? Oh, by the way, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, all that, all that good crap. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> broke mess because christmas left me broke <laughs> yeah exactly can't wait <laughs> can't wait till i get the Christmas <laughs> present from the credit card companies <laughs> so, oh yeah it's gonna be great mm, i love them well i mean first. 
Andrew, because I hate you, I didn't invite you to my uh, Dungeons and Dragons versus Rick and Morty session. That's okay, because I heard about it. I heard it was an absolute shit show. Actually, I heard pretty good things about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on the, no, I guess, I, what, the second, the second week of uh, January or whatever? You didn't, you didn't not invite me. I... I opted out because I was too busy moving. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stole things, whatever. The point is, you missed out. It was awesome. I'm gonna tell you all about it, even though you wanna, you don't wanna hear it. It's okay. You, you do that. I'm gonna play music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, seriously. Listen to me. <laughs> Nobody else does. No, please. <laughs> I, I need the attention. Go on. <laughs> Um, so I get because I buy everything the uh, Wizards of the Coast ever releases. I bought the Dungeons and Dragons uh, versus Rick and Morty box set. Um, and at first, I wasn't planning on running it anytime soon. I just had it. Uh, I started reading it, <laughs> and I kid you not, I did not stop laughing the whole way through. Um, the whole damn thing is written by Rick Ch- Sanchez. I always want to say chances for some reasons. Rick Sanchez. Um. And Kristen, I'm like in the living room reading, and Kristen, I think she was sleeping at the time. And then she comes out and she's like, what the hell are you laughing at, you weirdo? And it was just me sitting there just reading the module uh, for uh, Rick and Morty. It's, it's meant to be for first-time DMers, um, but not really, because like, <laughs> if you base your DMing off of Rick Sanchez's uh, DMing style, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very different from everybody else. Um, and I was like, I was like, I can't, I need to run this as soon as I can, because this is way too good not to run it. This was around like early December or so. Um, it turns out that, you know, because Andrew's moving, we were going to have a session early in the year. So I just like, screw it. I'm going to schedule it for the 8th. So we had it. We had a session. And Andrew, let me tell you, this is the funniest module I have ever run. It is ridiculous with a capital R. Here it gets pretty meta in some places. It is so the very first thing, <laughs> the very first thing that like is in the dungeon is like Rick Sanchez essentially tells like yeah, uh, so this room smells like uh, like bats and bat poo and it's dark and and and, and gross. There's you you he says um you uh you see some bats in the room they're probably harmless and that's where the description ends and then the lines for the DM starts with. Yeah, they're no harmless. They're actually like four sturges that are here waiting for them to to step in so they can attack. <laughs> and the whole the whole oh it's so funny. If anybody can like just read it for the hell of it, just because even if you're not gonna run it because it's, it's hilarious. Rick, it's just it's oh, it was it was great. He the way he writes is he it's like everything that the, the every DM has ever thought of, he puts it on writing. And he makes it the way it's the way the the story is written. It's like first of all, there's no like it's 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 one dungeon. There's no oh we got to save the kingdom, we had to save the the princess, or oh the death curse is gonna get us or whatever. None of that. No, is the adventurers are here and we're gonna kick some ass and get some treasure. That's literally like written in the module. Um. And then it's just a, a bunch of rooms with a bunch of different stuff. Um, there is, oh my god, there is, um, <laughs> there is a room with a with a writer that is stressed out because <laughs> he needs to finish the dungeon. <laughs> and the room is just a white room. And when the players step in, it just starts changing shapes. And like the the writer starts writing traps that spring into into action. And then the 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 the, the, the players have to like avoid certain things. And then if the if the players like kill the writer or uh, talk to her to make her stop, the treasure that is left behind is a half drunk uh, bottle of sc- a bottle of scotch and uh, a pack of cigarettes <laughs> 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 and the whole dungeon is is the whole is so ridiculous there's a trap that steals your butt um there is a cult with people that have no butts there is a scientist that wants to destroy the traps that steal butts the scientist has two butts and it has a butt cannon <laughs> a lot of butts going on in this <laughs> There's a there's a room <laughs> that they walk in and it's a big like a uh, like a big executive table like those where they have meetings and huh? there's like there's a bugbear at the end and there's like <laughs> hundreds of monsters in like uh 
uh, oh, what did you call it? Like where people sit when they watch basketball games in high school. Bleachers, yeah. And they're just sitting there, they're just clapping. And the, essentially the whole thing is that the players have to like, they give them a randomized item. <laughs> and the players have to do a commercial for the item. And they have to like roll pretty high or or, or, or do like a convincing co- commercial. So essentially my players get a set of goggles that when you put them on, it flips, it flips everybody's nose with their mouth position. And let me tell you, I did not expect that it was like Heather, how, <laughs> well, first Heather and Alex, because, you know, they do marketing for a living. So <laughs> they started off right away with a commercial and it was fucking brilliant. And then Jeremy added on, Aaron added on, and then Howard, because he's the quiet one at the end, is like, he just looks at the screen and like, well, what else is there? <laughs> 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 and essentially, like they killed it, and all the because it was pretty funny. So I let them, I let them have it. They had to roll like an eighteen of crits, like, like all of them even individually. But I was like, fuck it. Yes. So like all the monsters just like burst into cheering and like started throwing gold and yay! Because apparently the monsters in this dungeon they have breaks, and their breaks is watching commercials. <laughs> So oh, while they're like the actual <laughs> monsters that they were fighting, yeah, <laughs> that was, that so, was break time. yeah, break time. They go into this room, and the, the the room is just essentially like a TV channel, and all they do is have commercials. <laughs> there was so much random shit. It was so good. If you guys want to watch it, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna upload the YouTube video of the of the first session on YouTube, so you can all enjoy it on and Facebook. Because it was, I've never run and have never run an adventure like that. Because usually, you know, it's I've run mainly fantasy fantasy adventures, and it's the usual, you know, the, the dragon's gonna kill whatever the town is on fire, etc. Well, here it's just there's no point. You just go through it to have fun, and each room is just. It's it's just it's so hilarious the way, the way it's written. The traps are funny. The it's if you watch, if you ever watch Rick and Morty, it is that tone, and it's it is written in such a way that makes it easy for anybody to convey that tone to anybody else. Yeah, it's just it is just a no frills adventure. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect it's a perfect one of. Sadly, we had to split it into two. So next episode is next episode is going to be actually this Wednesday, the January the <laughs> the fifteenth. If you guys want to tune in, uh, but this yeah, it's just one off that we are having a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because we only play for three hours. But like, if you're like you know other groups that like meet at noon and they end up by six, you can definitely do it in one day. You know, oh man, it's it's good and and like you know it was a it was a nice change of pace because. We're playing Barovia, which, for as much as we love Barovia, man, Barovia is, is, in, is intense. <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's intense. Like things are happening. Like you, you, no. you, it's, you cannot. For for as lighthearted as we try to make it, like <laughs> there's shit going on. <laughs> like you know what yeah, I mean. And that's and that's something that's like I'm not even trying to make it <laughs> like that bad. It just is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and before um, that, and before that, we had Waterdeep, which was a little bit more lighthearted, but it still was like, hey, you know, like crime and dark, blah blah. And then before that was Tomb of Annihilation, which was like the Death Curse. And then before that was Storm King's Thunder, which is the giants are, are trying to take over the world or whatever. So like, just having an adventure where it's just completely ridicule, uh, ridiculous nonsense throughout. It is, and it hasn't. It hasn't even gotten to the best part yet, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So I'm not gonna say anything, especially for my players. But I'm excited to run the second part. It's gonna be epic. It's and the video, of... and the video didn't get taken down because I put the. We started with the uh, the intro to Rick and Morty, and I'm like, all right, that's it for today, guys. We got taken down from Twitch, <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. It was great. Uh, so if you guys want to tune in on Twitch uh, this Wednesday, um, feel free to. Uh, if, if if you're watching this from the future, it's gonna be on YouTube, so you guys can can take a look at it. And uh, and if you if you're a DM and you're interested, I guarantee I I, I guarantee you're gonna have a good time, 100. percent Unless you're a stickler, but if you're playing D and D, you're not really. You know, it sounds like, like a really good like palate cleanser. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I wish I wish it would be there, dude. But because you know, I it's specific. It is specific for five players, so I can't have any more. That's all right. I like I said, I I can see the on it. I'm, I was like, nope. I I sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> so, oh, but it's it's really good. Plus, I mean, the set is really nice too, and it comes with like some really nice uh some really nice um dice and anyway, they're like green with blue really like radioactive looking yeah i saw those dice they looked uh pretty toxic <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't, uh, don't don't put it in your mouth <laughs> yeah don't, don't, don't do that uh but no it was great it was, everybody had a good time i uh, just let them do whatever the hell they're gonna do um, i rushed a couple of parts but um it was mainly because it was they were kind of boring, but it, regardless, I didn't rush anything else. It was like one trap, I think, if I remember correctly. But uh, it was so good. It was so good, so freaking good. I can't wait to finish it off. Um, but yeah, Dungeons and Dragons versus Rick and Morty is a really good time. No alcohol required, or you know, alcohol too. Like whatever. I was drinking a beer when we were playing because <laughs> I'm a drunk. Yeah, you kind of are. I'm. I'm actually starting to worry about you. <laughs> Wait, no, no, this is not an intervention again, is it? <laughs> no, but when you come visit, it will be. No, damn it, Andrew, not again. <laughs> this is a dry house, young man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, you're not, you're not going to find a, a drop of alcohol within... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing we packed was our booze. <laughs> <laughs> of course, what else are you going to pack? Yeah, oh. That's it. We don't need a bed. <laughs> oh man um what else happened between last last episode and this episode uh we had the forgotten realms lariel silverhand explorer kit release tell me about the lariel silverhand explorer kit what is it <laughs> it is uh if you guys have seen the the dungeons and dragons uh baldur's gate descent into a furnace uh dice set it is essentially that, but based or focused on the Sword Coast and more specifically the cities of the Sword Coast. Um, I don't know why they, I don't know why they call it Light Rail Silverhands Explorer Kit, um, because she's the open lord of uh, Waterdeep. So maybe it's it's more into Waterdeep than the other cities. But if you look if you look at it, it has like Neverwinter, you know, the Ice Wind, um, you know. So it comes with a little map and a nice, beautiful blue box, a full set of dice. And these dice have the Dungeons and Dragons logo on it. So I'm definitely going to get them. They're like blue, like a sea water blue. So they're really nice. Um, but Jose, why would they come out with a water deep dice? Set I, I, they, I actually. If the module already came out, I don't understand. <laughs> I, 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 I also don't understand. And. Um, People are saying that the new book that is going to come out soon is going to be another uh, based on the Sword Coast, but <laughs> they are definitely wrong because just this morning the Explorer Guide to Wildemount was the book that was mysteriously leaked on Amazon. Yeah, so totally, you... totally leaked, and then literally the next day it was on the Dungeons and Dragons website. <laughs> <laughs> right? <clears throat> Do you want to talk? You you want to talk a little bit about it, uh, Andrew? Well, oh, but hold on. But, but before we get on to the um, Explorer's Guide to Wildemount, I kind of want to go back to the speculation that there might be another Water Deep adventure. That could happen because Wizards of the Coast is cranking out these books now. <laughs> that is <laughs> that is that is true, and I wouldn't be surprised because usually, what before it was what like two two main books, uh, two main adventures a, a year, was it? And now it's like one every like three months, it seems like. Yeah, it's just it's very mysterious as to why they released this uh this uh Sword Coast Lariel Silverhand uh now and not when Waterdeep and uh, the Mad Mage came out. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I, I would I, I I think it would be a huge missed opportunity if they didn't have an adventure if, if they only had one adventure in Waterdeep or like the Sword Coast, like that, you know. Right. I mean, most most adventures have taken place in the Sword Coast, I think, other than like Tomb of Annihilation, or the official ones, other than like Tomb of Annihilation. 
but but especially in water deep you know yeah like like involving the cities well i mean avernus but avernus already has its own dice set you know yeah, but that's not in water deep that's in baldur's gate right but baldur's gate is also on the sword coast no no but i'm talking about like like specifically water deep specifically water deep because dragon heist mm. came out with the entire map of water deep which is nothing to sneeze at <laughs> yeah it's a lot of stuff and you're right and it was only a level one through five it'll be really cool if they come up with like a, like oh water deep is gonna fall type situation yeah so i mean you never know you know we we don't know what's coming coming in the pipeline but here's hoping you know yeah oh hold, hold on a minute i'm gonna hack uh we're just off the coast server and the fbi know where i'm at <laughs> Like, wait, what? <laughs> so you have you have internet connectivity problems. <laughs> yeah, we know. There's this little thing called an IP address, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take me alive. Those damn IP addresses. <laughs> I, I should have um, used a VPN, anyways. Um, <laughs> fuck uh, enough. This episode was sponsored by ExpressVPN. <laughs> yeah, by NordVPN. <laughs> oh, one day. No. <laughs> Anyways, so let's talk about the book that we did get rather than the book that we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Matt Mercer's world is nothing to sneeze at. No, it's really not. So, so, so the book that um that conveniently got leaked the day before they officially announced it was the Explorer's <laughs> Guide to Wildemount? Am I Wildemount, yeah. Wildemount? Anyways. Um, uh, let yeah. me let me call about Mercer real quick. Uh, you know, I have him on speed dial. Yeah, here, hold on, wait. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Yeah, hey, Matt Mercer? <laughs> yeah, is that, <laughs> how do you pronounce Wildemount? Oh, it's Wildemount. Okay, it's Wildemount. <laughs> yeah, <right>. see, <laughs> 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 all right talk to you later Maddie. all right anyways <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> um no but what what this is uh, i guess this is um the setting that they were using for critical role which up until just now was a homebrew setting um so this is one of the things that's like Unfortunately, it's kind of lost on me because I haven't watched mm. the Critical Role. Like, Same. I've I've seen enough of it, of it to know what Critical Role is, but I haven't like got invested into the lore or like the setting or anything like that. But if you're a Critical Role fan, I'm pretty sure this is awesome. This is a bounty of like subclasses, spells, magic items, monsters, all these all this kind of stuff, and. <laughs> Even if you're not a fan of Critical Role, it's kind of awesome to think that one man's homebrew is now another person's source material. You yeah. know? Yeah. It, dude, I mean, I'm not... I love everybody from Critical Role, but I'm not an avid watcher. Like, I don't know oh, the next episode when it's going to come out type, you know? But yeah. I'm telling you, like, I mean, it has... I want it just because it has a bunch of subclasses, spells, magic items, monsters, you know? And it includes a new... Uh, a new type of magic, not a new school of magic, uh, called dun- Dunamancy? Dun- dun- Dunamancy? Dunamancy. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let yeah. Me call- again. <laughs> <laughs> no, Say hi for it. me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a busy man. Come on, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> hold on. I'm actually looking at yeah. what Dunamancy is. Keep going. It's essentially like... Do you know the superhero from Dead Deadpool, the one with the uh, the one that like it was all about like luck, like she sets things in motion. Domino. Yes. Domino. It's kind of Domino. like that. Yes. Domino. It, it's kind. Of, it's kind of like that in the sense that like it's all about like probabilities and math and like things that are set in motions and like. Um, <clears throat> oh man, that's a really good video about Dynamancy. I sent it to you. Um, but like it controls. Let me see. Character control over time. It gives character control over time, gravity, and probability. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I just kind of, I looked through a couple of the spells that's in Dunamancy that they had for like, um, what's the word? Like sample spells. And one was like a level one spell that gives you a one d eight to your initiative roll for the next eight hours and stuff like that. And then there's another, another one that's like it's called immovable object, which makes 
an object immovable and stuff like that. So it's not it's not particularly groundbreaking and it doesn't really seem to be more combat based. It just it really seems more like um utilities derivative, you know? Sort of. So for what I remember of the video, it he says that it's actually more yes, it's like utility, but it still does damage. And essentially it's more about like moving things around the battlefield and creating like certain situations with it. I mean you can control gravity for God's sake. So it's not it doesn't seem game breaking, which that's all that matters to me. <laughs> so it really seems like Matt Mercer did sit down and like, okay, how can I make this balanced? And, but still yeah. like unique. Which that's oh, awesome. I, I mean, and I mean I'm pretty sure everybody that wishes the codes helped them polish it too, you know, like all those game the game designers and they that they have. That's something yeah. that's something that like making making a spell for D D is legitimately the hardest thing you can do because <laughs> that's that's one of those things you need a lawyer for that wording. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, that thing needs to be airtight. <laughs> make sure it's yeah, make sure it's, there's no room for you know misinterpretation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But yeah, that's, so. those are some of the some of the releases. I'm actually kind of excited for Explorer's Guide to Wildemount. I'm gonna get it. I want to read the hell out of it because some new subclasses, new spells. That always oh, it's, it's also new monsters too. So pff, I'm always not? gonna I'm always gonna welcome new monsters. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, um, I believe that is all the time we have for you guys today. Thank you for joining us on our sixth episode. Yay, we're making it. We're almost getting to ten. Yay, um, we're almost into double digits. And this, we, is the part, this is the part where Andrew dies of complications. <laughs> <laughs> Puts a black and white picture of Andrew on the video. With like... yeah, that's okay. Someone else will have to carry the torch because we've, we've put money into this now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I, we promise we're going to get better microphones uh, eventually, so you don't have to listen to us through these uh, gaming headphones. But wow. thank you so much for listening to our, to our voices. Uh, thank you for joining us once again. Um, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Honestly, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Twitter. Uh, Happy New Year's. I forgot Spotify. Oh, oh Spotify <laughs> and iTunes. So oh, we're a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you guys make sure to leave us a review with comments. See what you like, what you don't like, what you like to, to hear from us. Uh, in our opinions, even though they're all shit, but you know, that's what we're here for. Yeah, your your opinions are all garbage. Mine are better. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us, and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and until two weeks from now, where we release our next episode. Yeah, we'll see you then. What we're we gonna talk about? I don't fucking know. <laughs> That's not your problem, though. Yeah, we're gonna have to deal with that one. All right, <laughs> you guys, keep on gaming, keep on uh, venturing, and move forward. Yeah. Bye. Bye. God, thank God, it's finally over. Jesus Christ. <laughs>